Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows or adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Arrow. So this episode obviously dealt heavily with the fact is that Laurel's dead, which I won't lie. In the back of my mind, I was constantly thinking, like, it, I, I still don't know if she's dead or not. Granted, I had some people, you know, I've heard some people point out the fact is like, oh, you know, because they did that hard cutaway from when it was like Laurel talking to Oliver. That's like, oh, she's totally alive, which is like, I don't know. Maybe they did that for other reasons. But, you know, still in the back of my mind, I'm like, why would they kill off the Black Canary like that? But it's like, you never know with these type of things. But it's just like, it's crazy to think that Laurel's gone. Um... Uh, to me, it was just like the way Oliver was acting in this episode. It feels like it never really hit him. But I guess truth be told, it's kind of like, well, Oliver spends most of the episode helping everyone else deal kind of with their grief. And no one's really, it's, it's you know, Oliver's never really had the chance to just do it himself. So I guess that's why you could argue. But it just seems like he was too, like, ready to move on, I guess. I don't know, it's like everyone deals with grief in their own way, so, and like I said, who knows, maybe it's a situation that even Oliver himself isn't, um, maybe it's something that Laurel did that, you know, maybe he doesn't know about, that she somehow faked her death, I don't know how she did it with him being in the room without him knowing, so, but I'm saying if she is still alive, he is, li he, he's good at pretending because it's just like, he looks so heartbroken because we also got the scene that we've seen previously, the gro we got the full um, grave scene where he's talking to Barry, which interesting enough, Barry has his powers, which I guess, if you want to think about show-wise, it's kind of like, well, it, this and the Flash probably take place at different points in time, so uh, this is probably either before Barry got his powers taken by uh, Zoom, or it could be granted after he's gotten them back, you know. And if you want to think about it realistically, it's probably because Arrow and Flash have different um, production schedules, so that's probably why, you know, because that decision was made a long time ago, probably even before they wrote out the fact is that Barry would end up losing his powers later on in the season. Maybe, maybe not, you know, why bother really overthinking it? It's just something interesting. I saw him walking up to the grave, I was like, oh yeah, he, you know, maybe that's why he missed the funeral, it was because he didn't have his powers, so he, it took him a long time to get there. It's like, no, he dashed away with his powers. I was like, okay, never mind, he has his powers. But, you know, like I said, those two reasons could be why. But, um, I did really like this episode, though. Um, it's it's really interesting how we saw um, just to me out of anyone, but well, really everyone's reactions to it is just like everyone's dealing with it. Diggle, the whole situation going after Dark's wife, that was crazy. Um, he was there's no telling exactly what Diggle was going to do. Granted, he was going to use her as leverage to go after Hive and Dark. But it was just like, man, like there was no, like there's no telling what he would have done if Oliver hadn't stopped him. Because like, you know, Oliver's told him like, it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. You know, you're not responsible for what happened to Andy. But Danny's, I mean, um, but Diggle's like, dude, like you warned me about Andy, and I didn't listen to you. And because of that, Laurel's dead. So like, out of anybody, I'm feel he feels the most responsible. But it's like when Oliver showed up to stop him, he's like, she's the mirror. You're a hero. Like you, she's she can twist this against us. And he's like, I don't care. He's like, he's so mad. He he couldn't even breathe. It was just like, it was heartbreaking. You know, you see him crying. He's banging on the car. It's just like, it's okay, Diggle. Like, nobody blames you. I mean, granted, he blames himself. A very interesting thing that Oliver said in this episode is the fact is, when it comes to someone dying, like, the reason, he's like, when it comes to blaming himself so much, he says, like, he explained to Felicity, he's like, you know why I blame myself so much? Because at least blaming is an answer. It gives you an answer. It doesn't, there's at least an answer, you know, because the alternative is just, oh, it's just a random occurrence. It's just one of the random aspects of life. You know, that's the only way you can make it sit, make sense if you blame yourself. Because even Felicia was blaming herself, sadly. Because she's like, if I wasn't he if I was here, maybe things would have been different. It's like, even in that case, like, Dark got his powers back. There was no nothing anyone could have done in that situation. And, you know, John, it's like you wanted to see the best in your brother. You know, it's, you can't be faulted for that. You know, because he... He did a good job fooling everyone. Because I bet you, even in the back of his mind, Oliver was thinking, like, maybe I'm wrong about this. But, you know, he probably was, you know, you know, because the more pessimistic side of him kind of sees, kind of, you know, he sees things a little differently than most people do because of his time on, um, on the island. So, you know, maybe he was qu quicker to be like, no, 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 definitely. And something suspicious with Andy. Maybe in the back of his mind, he started kind of thinking, no, maybe I'm not right because, you know, because of John. He's like, no, this is John's brother. I can't, brother, I can't be thinking like that. So, um, 
A really interesting thing that came up in this episode was uh, the fact is a black canary, a girl came who was dressed like the black canary. She even took um, that, uh, I forgot what it's called, it's the sonic thing that um, Laurel used to make her like black canary screams. And it's like, apparently somehow this girl, she's like a teenager, was able to amplify it and put it on a higher pitch than Laurel could. And also, apparently Cisco has designed it so that it only worked for Laurel. So it's like, for one, how does she, how is she even using it? Two, how did she get it to a higher pitch? And it was kind of interesting that was brought up because it was like, okay, like, who is this girl? She's talking about the Green Arrow failed her, came to rescue his friends, but he failed them. I'm like, what does that mean? Apparently, when he went to rescue everyone at, uh, when he rescued them, that when, um, was it, was it, Diggle, Thea, and um, Felicity that was kidnapped? I don't remember. But um, basically, he came to rescue and that time he came to rescue them. There were other people, and apparently, you know, they, they, they weren't all bad people. They were kind of under uh, Hive's control, specifically Dark's control. But basically, this particular girl, her parents got killed by a Hive slash Dark. And she's just basically getting revenge. It does make you wonder why she specifically chose the Black Canary. Maybe it's just kind of like how you know the Black Canary inspired her. Maybe that's why. I thought we, I was kind. I thought it was kind of interesting because I'm like, are we really getting a new Black Canary already? Because it's like Trippy Toad is. We personally don't know whether Laurel is really dead or not. I'm like, like I said, in the back of my mind, it's already in the back of my mind. I'm like, no, she can't be dead. Just because Trippy Toad is, I don't want her to be dead. I like Laurel, and it's just, it's, it just, it's so heartbreaking. I, I freaking hate that lady, that uh, Dark's wife. She, ooh, she's so good at being evil. Uh, props to that actress because she kept that like she she does that smug look really good essentially she basically turned the entire city against vigilante she's like oh i was attacked by um someone that's working with the vigilante you know she was attacked by diggle and earlier um alex thea's boyfriend former campaign um campaign manager for um oliver he was attacked by this fake black canary because she sees that he's working with the mayor and she knows that the mayor is connected to Hive. So that's why she attacked Alice because she's like, oh, he's obviously connected. Because apparently she's had some kind of, um, she's a bit unstable because the doctor was like, oh, she's kind of come in and out. And it seems she's a little unstable. Mainly it probably has a lot to do with the fact is that, you know, her parents got murdered. So she's probably not fully unstable. She just probably kind of had a breakdown because of what happened to her parents. But um, Oliver ended up stopping her from shooting the mayor. And she was... Mrs. Dark was just literally sitting there, sm like the gun was in her face, and yet she still had a smug look on her face because if she did anything, all it would do is paint the vigilantes in a um, bad light. And because uh, I mean, even Thea was upset about it because it doesn't matter, you know. They know that Laura was the real Black Canary, but she's running around in the Black Canary outfit, doing all this stuff, toting a gun, shooting people, and it's like. Everyone's going to think the Black Canary did it. But Oliver did an awesome thing and he revealed her true identity. He, he basically lied saying that with her last, before she died, she told me the truth that she was the Black Canary. And you know, the, the news kind of got spread. We even see it on her tombstone. It's like Dinah Laurel Lance, which I didn't know Dinah was her first name. Isn't that the name of the, um? that's actually the name of the uh, Black Canary comic book wise is Dinah. I just, her Maybe they just threw that in there because I don't think they've ever, you know, she's never been referred by her first name. Maybe that was kind of thrown in there, to, you know, because people are so pissed off like, oh, she's not, you know, the real like uh, black canary because, you know, Dinah is supposed to be. And it's like, no, nope, she, she's there because that's actually her first name. So I don't know. It's, it's just one of those things I noticed because um, she's never been referred to by her first name, always by her middle name, which I appreciate as someone who goes by their middle name, too. That's all. Uh, Maybe that was, like I said, maybe that was just something they threw in at the last second just to reveal to people. It's like, yeah, she really was the Black Canary. The Black Canary, granted, she might not be the same personality as the one from the comic books, but she does have the same name. So it's like, so it is the same one from the comic. You know what, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, um, but that was nice of him kind of revealing that. And I really, I felt so heartbroken from... The Lance family, like I said, that's why I didn't want it to be Laurel, because it's like this family has gotten screwed over multiple times. And just 
Lance broke my heart so many times this episode because he he calls up Nissa because he's like, okay, um, I got all my stuff. What do I need, you know, to pack for her, you know, once she comes out of the pit? He, she's like, the pit's gone. There's no other way to bring her back. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to find a way. And it took Oliver talking to her. And he's like, you don't understand what it's like to lose a daughter. He's like, but I've lost, I've lost my mom. I lost my dad. And I lost her too. And it hurts. And he's just like, I, I can't keep going. And then it makes it even worse because when um, Sarah and Laurel's mom comes to the funeral and then she's like, don't worry, you know, our babies, they always come back. You know, Sarah's come back multiple times. It's like, it's okay, they'll come back. And then he has to break the news to her. Yeah, she, there's, I'm sorry, but she's not coming back. That's all, it's just like, you see it in her eyes and it breaks your damn heart. It's just like, no, dude, this episode, man, it's just, it was just a sad all around, man. It's a good episode, but it's just, it, oh, it tugs at those heartstrings, dude. We get, constantly got flashes back to in this episode, um, to specifically back when Tommy died back in season one. Uh, it seems like these flashbacks, like if you were to put them in a place, it'd be between season one and season two. Like at the end of season one, but, but before the beginning of season two. And uh, she's at, uh, it's Laurel, because that was kind of what threw me off at the beginning. I was like, wait, what? Whoa, Laurel, Laurel, wait, what is, I was like, oh, we're in Tommy's funeral. I was like, okay, this is back in 2013. And basically she's... Um, giving his uh, eulogy, she's talking about him because Oliver just couldn't bring himself to talk with him. And it's kind of interesting, we're kind of getting, a, I guess, a different perspective on that, and I guess it's supposed to be reflective of now. Um, it's a very interesting thing. I will admit there was that weird part where we had, it was like a week after Tommy was buried, apparently, and we had, like, Oliver and Laurel sitting there, like, they ended up kissing, and granted, I mean, I think in Oliver's defense, he did kind of walk away from it, uh, because basically he said he kind of, um, basically, you know, he left her a note explaining. And he went, apparently, to Lee and you. It's, like I said, I, I don't rewatch stuff like I should. So I don't remember, did he go to Lee and you? Was he coming back from Lee and you during season two? I don't remember because we, apparently, like I said, this is in between season one and two. He went back to Lee and you, which he doesn't do that often. He's been back to Lee and you. I mean, this makes... The third time he's been back in Lee Yu, the uh, first time that we've known, like I said, not unless he did, and it was kind of an off-screen thing, or not. Was it just, because that's why I'm trying to wonder, was that something just added in, or was that something that did happen, and I'm just being stupid and don't remember? Do do let me know in the comments down below, because I don't remember. But, um, because prior to this, there was him, um, when he dropped Slade off to that prison on Lee Ann Yu, that, that's kind of built on the ground. And then um, when he was on the island training with um, Thea, it's when Thea found out what she did uh, to, when she finally found out what she did to Sarah because of Malcolm. So, and now I'm thinking about we ain't we haven't seen him for well, granted we ain't seen any of the major bad guys. I was about to say we ain't seen him for. I was like, yeah, we did. I'm, I was being stupid. We literally saw him last episode. I don't know. Ignore ignore, ignore me being stupid. But yeah, man. And it's like that ending. You know, it's just like Oliver's like. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to stop Dark? I don't know how to stop him with his magic. He's like, it's not just magic. It's just pure darkness. It's like, how do I stop that? She's like, you have to find a way. You basically, we have to kill him. And it's just like, man. It's like, how, how do you stop magic, dude? Because I doubt they can do the same thing as they did last time and destroy his totem. Because I'm sure he's going to keep it. At a safe enough distance and very locked away. They're not going to have an opportunity to, opportunity to go after it like they did last time. So it's like, how do they plan on taking down Dark? I will say it, like, I'm still unsure whether Laurel is dead. Like I said, somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm hoping she's not. That she's going... Because, like, for one, because if she was dead, I feel like we would have gotten that scene where it was like, whatever she said to Oliver before she died. Because obviously she said something to him before she died. So, you know, some people are going to be like, it's still blatantly obvious that she's still alive. It's like, honestly, we don't know. Maybe what she said in that time is just something where, like, oh, yeah, like, something that's going to be cut back to before the end of the season, just to be like, oh, like, it, it has some special significance, or maybe it is because she, she and Oliver work together to fake her death, like I said, if, if Oliver is faking, if he's lying, he's doing an amazing job at it, which everyone's gonna freaking hate him if he is, but like, you know, like I said, it's in the back of my brain, but I'm wholeheartedly actually starting to think she is gone, which sucks, but if she isn't, like, Diggle will never forgive him, because Diggle's been feeling like crap, everyone's been feeling like crap about this, especially all the heartbreak, 
that uh, her family's going through. So it's like, I do legitimately think she is gone. But uh, I, I, I don't know what else to really say. I guess I'm going to have to leave it on a somewhat depressing note. Because that's really all I really want to talk about and say in this episode. But until the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live white to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.